I've done there was just kind of scalloped and notched the back a bit. Now I'm going to go to a, a finer belt here. Now you're looking at about another hour of work, another hour of work on this knife to learn that I can. What I'm doing right here, I'm putting some, they call them finger notches, but I've done some reading a while back. The first one to do this to a knife back years ago was a knife company named Marbles. And people always thought those notches on the back of a knife is where to put your thumb or your finger when you're skinning with it. Well, I come to find out that's not the original reason for it. Marbles put it on the back of a knife and it was actually a crisscross section instead of lying straight across and it was to strike kitchen matches on it. And that's what it was for. But nowadays everybody does it and it's for finger grooves they call it. Finger notches. And that's to put your finger right there. It's what most people do when they're skinning. Keep your finger from slipping. So you can point with a knife. We're going back outside to the forge. All right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to temper the knife. What basically I'm going to do is harden it so it'll hold an edge. Okay, being this blade's been beat out, that means all the molecules are distorted and in, 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 in different shapes and different sizes and different places in the steel. Nothing's equal. So I'm going to heat this steel up red hot and let it cool about four or five times. That's called normalizing. And that's to get all the molecules to flow evenly. That's to keep the blade from cracking. All right, we'll let it cool. We'll turn this forge up a bit. Bring one up to red hot. That's the po that point's called critical in knife maker language. What critical means means the molecules are separated, and means a magnet will not stick to it. That's about three times. When it goes back down to black, to the color black. That means the molecules are gathered and I can reheat it again. Now I'm going to water quench this knife because this is not a real high carbon steel. High carbon steel you can water quench it. If you temper this in oil it will not harden. This particular part of the process is called hardening. This time I'll quench. The reason I'm doing it like this instead of sliding it directly into the forge, because I slide it directly in the forge, the middle of that forge is so hot, it will melt the tip off the knife. So this is heating it even along the edge. Okay, now this knife should be hard, and just to check it out, Okay, you might not can hear it, but anyway, this is how I check it. See if that blade's hard. It is hard. That's the way you want it. Now, if you'll notice, if you can compare the sparks off the knife this time compared to last time, the sparks are smaller and finer. That means the knife's hardened. All right, I started off with a 36 grit. I went to an 80 grit. Now I'm gonna go to a 220 grit. I'm gonna wire brush it. Time you build five of these in one day, you've done a day's work. Now we're fixing the hand sand. The, the time consuming part of it is doing the handles. When you start putting deer antler handles and micarta and different type of exotic hardwoods and if you start doing inlays with turquoise and malachite and different uh, materials, putting guards on it out of brass and nickel silver and, and even steel guards, 
you can put a lot of time in one knife. You generally get out of it what you put into it. I've built hundreds and hundreds of these railroad spike knives and I got to the point where I could build five in one day from start to finish. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put my touch mark on it. It's just my initials. EJC.